the Amish. Well known as the world's best woodworking religion and for people who like traveling slowly. I intend to find out what makes them so good at woodworking and can I, a below average YouTube woodworker, build a better chair than the Amish? So join me on this journey to find an Amish person to challenge to a furniture build off. I'm headed down to a small town in the middle of nowhere, Indiana, to meet with a man by the name of the Amish Potato. He'll be my liaison to meet the Amish and to challenge them to a furniture build off. With uh, CJ, the Amish Potato, we just pulled up to the first of the Amish shops and see if we can talk to somebody about what they got going on. You got any advice for me? No, just ask your questions. No, they're willing to answer. That's it. They're, they're good people. Uh, this is kind of our raw inventory product here. One of the things I learned really quickly when I started this video was that most Amish people do not want to be filmed. So I did my best to be respectful and tactful with how I approached this. Thankfully, CJ's friend Marcus from Fusion Design allowed us to take our cameras into their shop and film a lot of their process. He gave us a really detailed tour and showed us a lot of the great work that they're doing. Unfortunately, I didn't find anybody there that was Amish that I could challenge, but Marcus spent a lot of time with us answering my questions and helping me to understand a little bit more about the culture that he came from. I'll try to be in the face. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll just kind of keep it down. And yeah, that's fine. All right. The hand just flips around. Uh -huh. Belt spins this way. They can move. Put okay. pressure on any area that they want. That way all the leaves and everything match up. Being in a garage to this is incredible. Like to grow this business would be hard for anybody, but yeah. like given the restraints of an Amish lifestyle, yeah. like how was, how was your dad able to Well, I think create? times were different back then too. He was basically one of the pioneers in the Amish woodworking industry. To, yeah, going through the yellow pages, trying to find furniture stores. We try to stay on the cutting edge of styles. Mm -hmm. And so we're always pushing the boundaries on style, but that's not what people think of when they think yeah. of Amish furniture. They think we're, yeah, whittling out a piece of wood. Hand saws. Hand and saws and all of hand that. Hand Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's what, when people think of that, they tend to think of quality. That's right. probably the association of how that came yeah. to be. So Amish growing up, you, you don't, as far as careers, you don't have a lot of choices because you, you have an eighth grade education, right? So college is kind of out of the question for most people. So naturally you, you're farming or you're picking up tools to yeah. make a living. While gaining some really valuable insight into the Amish lifestyle, we did not find somebody to challenge to a furniture build off. However, CJ took me to another shop and we found just the right person to talk to. I'm uh, Steven Yoder. I'm the son of the owner. Of course, we aren't running electricity off of the line. Uh, but now we got a Cummins generator to generate power for our machinery. Okay. And yeah, all the way back, I think I was only three years old, which I know this is not legal, which I wasn't allowed to do this either, but I did do it. We had some wooden carts. They had screws to hold the top down, so I would, you know, maybe sneak a screw gun and, you know, start backing those out and then running them back in. And, you know, I, know, I knew I wasn't supposed to do it, but it was fun. And I was only three years old when I did that. So yeah, it was, uh, well, it was more fun when you're not allowed to do it, of yeah. course. <laughs> Is there somebody I could challenge to like both build a chair and then have um, CJ like judge it and you know like see who could build a better chair or something? Of course, my dad wouldn't want to be filmed, right? Because um, he's you know an Amish. I probably would not. Yeah. Accept that challenge because I'm I'm still just the Sander kid. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else you want people to know? Well, what it's like to be Amish. It's just kind of a slowed down lifestyle. Your viewers might not know, but I am not currently Amish. Which once we become 16 years old, we get the opportunity to you know, get a cell phone, which I do have a cell phone Okay. right now. I haven't joined church yet, so okay. if I would choose to join church, then I would have to wear Amish clothes, which I'm wearing a shirt right now, which right. isn't Amish clothes. Right. And, right. Yeah, they, they call it the room spring up. But it's not like you're intentionally being wild and crazy. Not gonna lie, I, we do do some wild things yeah. uh, while we're room spring, yes we yeah. do. Do your but parents like look down on that or is they, they don't approve it. Yeah, if they see something that's illegal, 
they will shut it down. They won't right. let illegal activity yeah. be going on. Like using a screwdriver at three. Yeah, well that. that <laughs> <laughs> What is it about the Amish that makes them good craftsmen and like makes them into like good woodworkers? Why are they known for that? Because we don't have as much technology, it's a little bit more handcrafted. While Stephen, the sander kid, was unable to help us with the challenge, he did give us some really valuable insight. And he also knew of another wood shop down the road that built chairs and he pointed us in the right direction. So CJ and I got back in the truck and went to the third shop for the day. We're gonna have to turn the camera off here in a second. Um, it's not really a great way to introduce yourself to somebody who doesn't want to be on film by filming them. So unfortunately, I can't show you that, but as soon as we can, we'll be back. Are you looking to do any type of uh, photography or recording at all? It, yeah, if I was to, I would ask first. I, I don't want to put you on something you don't want to be Take a quick walkthrough. I don't, okay. I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna ask to no photography or no videos or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, but for we sure. Can, we can take a quick walk through. I'll leave my camera in my bag. <laughs> At this point, I was super excited because I knew I had finally met a real bona fide Amish guy. And I knew right away he was the person that I wanted to challenge. The problem was he didn't want to be filmed. He gave us an amazing tour and he talked to us for more than an hour about his family, about his work, about their business, and about woodworking. And it was a fantastic conversation. And after talking to him for over an hour, I asked him the question, if he would accept the challenge. And he said yes, but he didn't want to use his name or his company's name. However, he did let me come back at a later date and film their process. So you will get to see here how they build their chairs. And it's probably not what you expect. For instance, for me to do what this one machine is doing would take me about 10 times longer and it wouldn't have the same level of precision. Turns out the Amish I met are even less of real woodworkers than Johnny Builds. So this machine, I don't know if you're familiar with this type of equipment. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah CNC. So yeah, so yep. this is three axis. It's, it's always, the, uh, the, the cutter is always perpendicular to the table. Yeah. Whereas this one, this is actually a five. A five, yeah, it's a rotate. Yeah, yeah. This one's similar. Uh, this is hard, kind of hard to see, but that actually holds two spindles and it also interpolates. It just changes. So instead, on those two machines, if I need a tool change, it'll go over to a tool carousel and grab it. This one also got a tool carousel, but a lot of times we can we can do the parts on here with two, two uh, tools. So within a part program, it'll just swap and use the other spindle for whatever. Okay. Oh. This one's a good example. Another similar situation. Those two, they're all held, uh, parts are held on by a vacuum. This one, uh, this can be a combination of vacuum and clamp. This one's the strong point is clamping. So okay. So this one's all about clamping the part okay. in a very rigid manner and then machining the way out. So you'll see this one carries three tools and then it just rotates to whatever. It okay. Is. Wow. That is amazing. <laughs> Perfect every time. This thing's got a hopper feed on it, so it'll feed up to about 20 minutes worth of product. Oh. Uh, it'll run unattended. It's got every little thing figured out. Well, we've been at it for a while, but... Quality, that is awesome. I love this here, too. So that's a uh, Ceruse finish. Uh, Ceruse. Yeah, that's kind of a mm. term. It's really, it's a, a wire brushed effect to it and then there's a liming wax that highlights the greens. So I don't take credit for this, but we get a lot of compliments on our on our tailoring, and that's all due to our yeah. ladies in the back. It's, I mean, it's immaculate. They did a really good job. How many uh, chairs do you ship out on any given day? So we, uh, we're producing about 500, I mean, five to 600 a week. Oh, you got a 3D printer. I do. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that was amazing. All right. Cool. Dude, my mind is blown. <laughs> CJ here, the Amish potato, got me the hookup. Their shop is incredible. The furniture of their building is immaculate. There's no way I can compete on the execution. And so I gotta be really creative, use my design expertise. I'm gonna take it back to their shop and have them judge it. <laughs> and we'll see how it goes. Mission accomplished. Um. Well, this is not how I thought the challenge would go. 
apparently I'm the one living in the last century and uh, I have to defeat the Amish now with all of their space age technology, their five axis CNC machines. I got a lot of axis C's. I may only have a old small one car garage shop, but I'm here for it and they're going down. This is a stool I made last winter. I think I'm gonna design the chair similarly to how I designed this stool. I'm gonna use ambrosia maple for the top and for the legs, I'm gonna use cherry. I think it's a pretty slick look, these two woods together. This ambrosia maple is from a tree that the city cut down in my yard a couple of years back. It's really beautiful wood, but the slab is kind of checked and split. I'm gonna to have to cut some pieces out of this and then glue them back together to get a nice solid piece for the base of the chair, which is the seat. Who, who does like the product development, design work? Most of that boils down to myself. Uh, we draw everything in, we do a 3D model in SolidWorks. But now, I mean, the, the angles and the different curves is pretty much irrelevant. The machines just cut whatever we yeah. program. So. <laughs> yeah. It, the world is completely, uh, that design aspect of it has completely changed. What about being Amish makes good furniture? You know what I mean? It's just like, when I think of Amish, I think of they're really good woodworkers. I'm just curious, like, how do you, um, like, how do you get your kids into it? And I mean, it's all about passion. I, I had a passion for woodworking when, when I was a kid and growing up into it. And time will tell. I mean, I don't know if my kids have, follow that passion or not. Yeah. Uh, and if they do, great. I'll be excited to have a part of it, but I'm not going to force them to it. Yeah. Do, do you let them like start playing with sanders and yeah. hand tools and stuff like that? Things that are not as dangerous. Um, yeah. Do you have a wood shop at home? I don't. I'd love to have one, but I'm not sure when I work with Do a lot of the community here, do they have wood shops at home? or? Yeah, well, I would say there's quite a bit, but okay. there's still, like I said, it all boils down to the passion of the father. Okay. Uh, it's not, by far not mandatory. But it's all about if somebody takes an interest in that. Yeah. Then, yeah, they'll probably have a little small little workshop. Okay. And everybody's got their different interests. There's some people that wouldn't touch a piece of wood for nothing. Yeah. No. So, this might sound a little funny, but I was actually hoping to challenge somebody to like try and build a better chair. Okay. Than them. Would Would you be able to like give me a challenge or something like that? Or I guess I wouldn't be that opposed. I would not do that again. In the process of making this video, I've learned the most important lesson I ever have while woodworking. So make sure you watch until the end and I'll tell you what I've learned. I don't take a lot of credit for, this is all due to the equipment we've got and some of the, you know, I'm, I'm happy with some of the joints that we can make because of yeah. the precise equipment. But, yeah. uh, are you doing a lot of that by hand or? Yeah, I, I mean, I have a table saw, drill press, uh, joiner, sure. basic stuff, but yeah. I, yeah, I made a, a, a wife-powered bicycle lathe, so I had her riding a bike and I was trying to um, work on that. That was fun. Well, by this point I was honestly thinking I was more anti-technology than this Amish man, but nonetheless, I had to carry on. And, and this is kind of where somebody could challenge us as a very detailed, very meticulously crafted product. Okay. We're still production-based. We, yeah. we got to do good quality, we realize that, but there's, yeah. there's certain things that I really envy of some of the master craftsmen that take, you know, hours, take weeks on end to build a, a yeah. very meticulous yeah. chair. I, re I respect that. I, yeah. I admire somebody like that. Yeah. I've got a lot less tape this time. Hopefully I don't get it stuck again. Gosh dang it. There's still... Oh my gosh. I did it again. How is this so strong? I'm not that person. <laughs> I've, I've never done a dovetail in my life. I, I, I'm more on the design side of things where I just try and make it like nobody's ever seen it before. I may not have a five axis router. I can still get it pretty clean. So probably what I'll, I'll bring you is something that looks really weird and um, then we'll compare it to yours and we'll, you can laugh at how bad my joints are <laughs> and all that. I'm super thankful for you opening up oh, your sure. shop to us and showing us around. It's it's just like blowing my mind, you know? I, th I think it's probably a little bit of a stereotype 
because when we think of Amish, like all we know is it's traditional. They, you know, have buggies and horses, and like to see the, all this innovation and this beautiful furniture, it's like I, it's surprising me. Well, I think we'd be trying to fool you if we told you that we're the same we always have been. Things oh, okay. have progressed over yeah. time, and I'll be the first one to admit. He can attest to some of the reasons of that, probably, but it's it's all about, like I said, some of these things have come about because of being able to make an income at home or being able to be self-employed or fit in the marketplace or being yeah, self-sustaining, I guess, yeah. is some of the reasons why we adapted some of these. As I was flush trimming this hand rest thingy, I got a lot of tear out, so I'm going to have to try and patch that. There's still a tradition side of the things where we try to keep uh, the morals where they need to be, and uh, those are some, probably kind of the dividing line of where we, we try to make a... For a sure. Kind of try to retain some of that. So. Yeah. And that, that can be done in Amish, non-Amish, whatever. I'm not here to tell you that Amish is the only way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just happen to happen to be raised in a family like that and choose to continue the tradition, I guess. Well, when I think of Amish culture, I think of tradition and, you know, conservative lifestyle, but it seems like you're on the cutting edge of all the equipment and the, the design. But is that related at all, or you just... I would say some of that allows us to retain our traditions. And what I mean by that is, so it makes us viable in the market. So by being, you know, having the capacity to do that and stay in the marketplace, uh, we can still have, we have a home-based business. If we still had to rely on everything, all, you know, hand tools, and we, we, couldn't, we couldn't compete in the marketplace. I don't like to focus on the culture that much. It's more about solid wood. It's... it's built well, yeah. overbuilt, it's, it's supposed to last long. So I would much rather focus on design and the quality. Uh, and quite frankly, we don't market Amish food. Yeah, It's about all the things I just said. It can be used as a detriment because some people, if they think Amish furniture, they're thinking one wood species oak, they're thinking very traditional uh, and no design. Okay, so now that we're almost finished here, we need your help. Please write down in the comments after you see the final reveal and my conversation with the shop owner, who do you think won this challenge? But how should we be thinking about the value of these chairs? I think about it in three ways. First of all, usefulness. How good is it at being the chair it was designed to be? Second of all, strength. This has to do with durability, longevity, and safety. And then third of all, design. Is it beautiful? Is it pleasing to your eye? Would you wanna have it in your home? I just pulled over, I'm almost to the shop, and I'm calling them out once and for all. I wanna see who can build a better chair, an almost average YouTube woodworker or the Amish. There's only one way to find out. I gotta show them my chair and see what they think. I'm finally back at the shop and I'm ready to reveal the chair and see if a YouTuber can uh, build as good of a chair as <laughs> the Amish. Uh, I'm gonna reveal the chair to the shop owner here and uh, see what he thinks. I like the uh, different mixed media you've got. Uh, you got different wood species. You can sit in it if you want, see? Cause I, I, I really want it to be ergonomical. Right. You're a lot bigger than I am. Yeah. <laughs> so it is a little stuck here, but it's, it's all stuck. depending on the customer. I like the, the openness here and yet it's still got the uh, yeah, the armrest. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at some of the joints, very precise. I had a, like a little spacing problems here. Oh, but that's pretty but minor. It's good though. It's, it's got a little despite wobble. Despite the fact that it doesn't have any stretchers yeah. in here, uh, it looks it's pretty rigid. I don't know that I would change a lot on it. And yours is like everything's really tight. All the joints are nice and tight. The equipment, I'm sure, is quite a bit different than what you're using as well. So, uh, yeah, basically a table saw and a band saw. Yeah. So, <laughs> considering that, yeah, I'm very impressed. Aesthetically, it looks really good. I would be a little concerned putting it on the market yep. in terms of structure. I, th I think my problem is I, I want to be really innovative, and sometimes I forsake, like, <laughs> you know, sure. tradition that's Im important. I think I designed a one-off unique piece, and I think you designed something that a lot of people would want in their homes. <laughs> 
It's got a good cushion to it. So what started out with me thinking I'd be challenging somebody with hand tools turned out to be me being the one who was outdated. <laughs> so this is the third chair I've built. We've been at this for 21 years, this type of product for 21 years, and this being the third chair is remarkably nice. I've got a lot of respect for the work you guys do. If it was up to me, I would say you won the challenge. I don't know about that. We could put it up to a pole. Each design has its place. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. It was so great to uh, great. be able to work with you. Don't, don't, uh, don't challenge the Amish. Um, don't make bets you can't win that's 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 the lesson i learned that's that's what i wanted to tell you um don't don't do that i, I think i lost their chair is stronger and more durable and put together uh better and uh it's probably more useful as a dining chair and it's kind of caught between lounge chair and dining chair but why don't you tell me who, who you think won put it down in the comments be respectful be kind okay Auf Wiedersehen. Both of ours are better than Ikea, so. Yeah. <laughs>